seven. At the gateway of consciousness. I can still remember it. It was the summer of 1989. My days were spent lying out in the baking sun, my eyes shielded under the journey to Ixland. I was 17 and rebelling from my grandparents in search for my own identity, living at that special age of discovery. I felt stifled by those around me and began to immerse myself in any readings I could find, seeing in the lost words of others the assurance that I was not alone. I began to experiment with meditation, learning to direct my energy towards my third eye, and with it began to open myself to everything that this universe had to offer. I flew with the angels and swam with Neptune's legions. I experienced all simultaneously. I was the universe. I was the sun. I was the earth. I was the blankness of empty space. As a teenager, my life seemed fused together with my three best friends, meeting every day after work, falling into our ritual, healing ourselves from another pointless day of selling our time. We were closer than brothers, the four of us, the same Fantastic Four that when thinking back my whole childhood seems based, even though there were so many others. But it was in those years of discovery that we lived with intertwined memories, finding in each other the support and friendship that we needed while left clutching at the beads of sand, counting down the hours of our adolescences. It was during that summer, the summer of psilocybin, which would forever change our worlds. We began binging, drinking tea for meals, experiencing everything in all different directions as we as disabled, we disabled senses, senses, senses only to, only heighten, to heighten, others. heighten others. Spending our nights lying flat on the slope of the earth, clinging to the rooftop while the fall of sky kept us alive. Everything became safe. Our psyches began unraveling in great conversations of truth, holding on to every thought, not allowing anything to go unheard, while we grew almost simultaneously together in another night lost to our adolescent philosophy. My perceptions were forever shaped by those nights of discovery. No longer was I able to pretend that I was going to be a businessman, unable to believe that my money would keep me happy, or that I could sit by and watch as someone else continued to fuck the world for their own personal gain, even if it was mine. I can still remember those rampant thoughts of droned silence, when left alone in our minds for those minutes that lasted hours. After the final shift in our trip, and we would become lost with internal battles, knowing that the night would soon come to an end. However, for the remainder of the night, we would watch in silence as the stars continued to fall, no longer counting, simply in awe as we attempted to come to grips with our place in this unstable existence. Those forgotten hours, when the pace of thought slowed to a standstill at the gateway of consciousness, My thoughts always returned to mother during this phase, eyes closed, pressing tight, trying to force the tears that were already dried up, lost with my innocence, engulfing me with her warmth, protecting me from myself. There's no way of knowing where I would have ended up without those summer nights alone, amongst friends. As life seemed to rest at the edge of discovery, what was lost in the questions? Who am I? What purpose could I have, fighting at all costs against the belief that I was just another product of chemistry, and just like all the others? But still, I had no answers, only more questions. What purpose is there? Love. It was all I could think of, and at that point, I didn't even know what it was. And yet, I hoped.